Hello, West Sussex, and welcome to Sports Night Radio, The Wire's official student ram podcast for all things sports. My name is Paul Gustafson, and I'm joined today, as always, by Mr. Kern Rostogi. What's up? How you doing, Kern? I'm all right. I'm doing all right today. So, as you know, the decade's coming to an end here with the new year. What do you think? Last school day of the decade. Can't wait. That's true. So, a lot of great sports moments this decade. Is there any game or sports moment you remember, like, experiencing? Well, uh, the biggest sports moment that I've personally been a part of was when Rutgers beat Michigan in our first year of, of, of being in the Big Ten Conference uh, at, uh, what is it, High Point, High Point Solution Stadium. I was with my dad. I lost my tooth that day, and it was a big, it was a big game. Um, we stayed. It was The atmosphere was electric, and um, when the students rushed the field at the end of the game after we blocked the kick, it was really good. Has Rutgers won a game since then? Yeah, I didn't know that. I'm actually surprised. They they've won they've won. They won a game. They they did. They're not doing so well, but they beat your Seton Hall uh, Seton Hall Pirates in basketball. All right. Well, my greatest sports memory is last night when Seton Hall beat number seven Maryland. I was there in attendance without Powell, without Mamu, took down Maryland. All right. I don't okay. really care. Okay. Well, so we decided to compile here. A list of each of our top 10 sports moments of the decade because honestly this was probably one of the best decades in sports i would say well that's probably just because we actually experienced it it's our first decade yeah all right so we're gonna go back and forth 10 10 and just like that i'm gonna go first every time okay cool yep my number 10 spot we have umbc upsetting virginia in the first round of march madness this was in 2018 i think First ever 16-1 to upset in college basketball. And they beat him good. They beat him by 20. That was impressive to me. Uh, my number 10 is D. Gordon's home run tribute to Jose Fernandez. It was the first game after the passing of him. Um, it, it, was, it shows that sports are more than just a game and people can come together. Great tribute by D. Gordon. Good choice. Number 9, I have Kawhi Leonard's shot in the 2019 NBA playoffs. Against the Philadelphia 76ers in Game 7, which led to the Raptors going to the East Finals, where they won the Finals, and they became the first non-USA team to win the NBA championship. But what's most impressive is the actual shot and how it bounced. One, two, three. Was it four? Three. Four. 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 Know, four, four. four about one, and then beat the Sixers. Uh, my number nine moment is the kick six. It made Chris Davis a household name in Al- in all of Alabama. On the Orioles? <laughs> on the Auburn Tigers yeah. against the Alabama Crimson Tide in the Iron Bowl. Um, what year was that? Was that 2010? 2014, I thought. 14. I thought it was 2014. Um, it brought... it. When you go back and you watch it, it has legendary commentary when the guy, when the other announcer's like, Auburn's going to win the football game. Auburn's going to win the football game. And I really just thought that that was a really good moment, and we need to put it because it was the ending of a such great game in a, a long-lasting rivalry. Now I'm interested. When was it? 2013. 2013. I was going to say, it feels like forever ago. It's a long decade. Number eight. I'm a Miami Heat fan, so I have the Heat's mini dynasty in general, but in specific, Ray Allen's three-pointer in Game 6 of the NBA Finals against the Spurs. Obviously, what's really impressive is the Heat started the whole, you know, superstars teaming up era when they brought in LeBron and Bosh to join Dwayne Wade, and what's really impressive here is Ray Allen, the game-winning three-pointer from the corner, LeBron missed, Bosh the rebound, back out to Allen, bang! So... That's my number eight is rounds three pointer. I think the most impressive thing is how he's he practiced uh, backpedaling and then shooting a catch and shoot Absolutely. three. It was very impressive. All time great shooter. Round. Yep. Um, my number eight is Kobe's last game. It was the tribute to a legend. Every celebrity was there. Um, people of his teammates, uh, old former teammates, were there. I'm pretty sure Phil Jackson was there. And it was the end of an era. He dropped sixty points in his last game, and he hit the game winning shot. That's a pretty that's a pretty good farewell. That was a great moment, I have to say. I actually have that on my list a little bit higher. Number seven, I have Villanova's game-winning shot in the national championship against North Carolina. But something I kind of want to focus on 
is what's overlooked is the possession before that. North Carolina. I don't know who it was. Do you know who? No, I didn't. I Hit saw it too. A much better shot. An incredible shot. Three pointer. That's really impressive. But Chris Jenkins ended up coming back down. Got the assist from Marcy Diacono to win the national championship from Villanova. Yeah, I have it. Villanova. I have it too. I had the same thing. Uh, UNC, it was like, it was very deep. It was like in between, it was closer to half court than yeah. it was to the actual three point line. And then Jenkins comes in and he pulls up from NBA range and he knocks the game to win U- uh, to win Villanova a uh, title. And it was just an insane moment to be a part of. Number six, bouncing off of Curran, I have Kobe's last game. A legend scored 60 points in his final game, and that's why he's the second greatest shooting guard of all time. Uh, number six, I have something different. I have a soccer moment. Uh, Leicester City winning the Premier League in the 2016 season. Um, it It's really insane because when you think about it, um, Leicester the year before was in last place by Thomas Jefferson's birthday, which is a uh, way to show how how bad they were. And they were they had terrible odds, and they went on a fairy tale run the next year to win the Premier League, and it was just an insane way to do it. Gotta be honest with you, I have no idea what you just talked about. All right, Thomas Jefferson Premier Fairy Birthday. That's what I heard. <laughs> okay, number five, I have the Minneapolis Miracle. Uh, great play from the playoffs in is that seventeen, eighteen. I don't remember. 17. 17. Case Keenum drops back against the Saints, throws deep. Marcus Williams couldn't make the tackle. Stephon Diggs wins it for the Saints, and then they ended up losing to Nick Foles. And uh, and the Philly special. No, that was in the Super Bowl. I know. What? What? What's the round before Super Bowl? Championship. Championship. Yeah, you, I don't you know. Can't I just blanked. Oh, I'm sorry. All right, he can't think. Um, I have the Cubs win the World Series at number uh, five. Um, it broke the longest curse in MLB history, your so-called curse, the Billy Goat curse. Um, and a long time um, happened. Er, and they had choked a lot of times before, uh, most notably with the Steve Bartman incident where the fan caught the ball and then he was forced into hiding because of all the Cubs fans just hating on him for um, for poor catching Bartman. that ball. Yeah, that's a poor Bartman. Number four, I have the Cubs... Winning the World Series after a 108-year drought, just like Curran did. Wait, uh, we're number, number five, Paul. No, I read my number five. It was the Minneapolis Miracle. All right, well, number number four. I'm stupid. It, clearly. Uh, well, actually, what's also impressive is that they ended up coming back from a 3-1 lead in the World Series to beat the Indians. So, Cubs at number four, ending the great World Series drought. Yeah, uh, we'll get into this later, but 3-1 leads and blowing leads was a major theme this decade, I'd Absolutely. like to think. Uh, at number four, I have the Minneapolis Miracle. I'm just going to hand on what Paul said before. Um, he kind of drew a, uh, Case Keenum just kind of chucked it up. I mean, it was a it was a perfect pass. He jumped up, got it. They signed Kirk Cousins the next year, which is proven to be a mediocre move. It's He overpaid him a little, it's but it's an like, interesting move. It's we'll an interesting, interesting. It's an interesting move. And Stephon Diggs, it made him, uh, if you go back and you watch the commentary and you watch everything, um, you can tell. Uh, Stephon Diggs is a, definitely a w- more well-known player because of that. I, I, I don't know if I, he broke out because of that, but um, I think he was just... People know him now a lot more. Number three, I have a Super Bowl moment. Uh, Seattle Seahawks, New England Patriots. Let's put ourselves... Set the scene. Let's say I'm Pete Carroll. All right. You're Russell Wilson. We're on the one-yard line. What, what would you do? We have the best running back in football in the backfield. So what I think we do is because, I don't know, I don't know. I, I think we just run a, uh, a dive up the center between the tackles. No, we're going to run a slant, and Malcolm Butler's going to intercept it, and we're going to lose the Super Bowl. Horrible play call by Pete Carroll. I'm sorry. I love you, Pete. But Malcolm Butler really made himself a, a Patriot legend, kind of ended up signing with the Titans after that. But that really got his name out there, and it won the Super Bowl for the the Patriots, Tom Brady, won him another Super Bowl, too. Um, number three, I have another infamous Patriot moment of the decade. The blown 28-3 to lead um, by the Atlanta Falcons. I was at my friend's house watching the Super Bowl, and I kind of just, we kind of turned the TV off, and we started playing Madden because we just didn't 
the Falcons were up by so much that we were like, all right, it's not a big deal. The Falcons will end up with the win. And then we come back, and they make it interesting, and then they drive down the field, and a lot of stuff happened. Uh, Matt Ryan had some biggest chokes. He dropped all the way back for a sack. He took, like, a 20, 20-yard sack to put them out of field goal range. So, you know. Never turn off the Super Bowl for Matt, unless you're playing Superstar KO, which is fun. Yeah, but what about during the blackout? Okay. I respect that. Patriots 28-3, comeback is my number two sports moment of the decade. And my favorite part about that was Julian Edelman made the greatest catch I've ever seen. When on their drive when they were down 28-20. to 20. Incredible catch with like three defenders on him. Just grab the fourth the ground. My number two is Patriots 28-3 comeback. That's something straight out of Madden, by the way. Absolutely. Um, number two, I had the Warriors coming back from a 3-1 lead. I think that... Cavs coming back from three. Cavs. Why did I say? Why did I say that? All right, whatever. They choked the Warriors. I don't know, Paul. Um, some of the best moments of the entire of of basketball oh, yeah. were in this de- were in this uh, series, and it was one of the. I'm pretty sure it was the big. It was the no team has ever come back from a three one lead, and the Cavs did it because anything is possible when you have LeBron James on your team. Number one. My number one sports moment of the decade is the Cleveland Cavaliers coming back down 3-1 behind the greatest player of all time, LeBron James. Chase down Block and Iguodala. Kyrie for three. They beat the greatest regular season team of all time, the 73-9 Warriors. Came back 3-1. And the Warriors got Kevin Durant the next year. So that's my number one. Um, my number one is the Malcolm Butler interception. I think what people kind of forget about this is the fact that literally like two plays before, Russell Wilson drops back, throws it deep, throws a deep ball to Jermaine Curse. Jermaine Curse bobbled every everywhere. <laughs> Paul voice cracked. Amazing out. catch. Um, and it was on Malcolm Butler. Malcolm Butler gave up that in- incredibly big game to bring him into the red zone. And then Marshawn Lynch got it all the way to the one yard line. I think that if the Seahawks decide to run the ball, it, they go in for a touchdown. That Malcolm Butler's uh, people are burning effigies of him in the street. Um, and. It's a sad game for Patriot haters like me. I'm he was also a, like Patriot a no-name before that. I didn't know Malcolm Butler before he picked that. Yeah. That was incredible for him and his career. Ended up getting a big contract with the Titans after that, too. So, that's what we have for our top 10, top 10 sports Sorry. moments. Today, we're going to get into the buzzer beater now, which is our uh, big, our best athlete of the decade. Um, I think I will go first, right? I'm going to count you down. Three, two, one. I'm going to go with Tom Brady, the one of the GOATs of the National Football League. Probably the GOAT. Um, and it comes from a Giants fan who does not like Tom Brady at all. Uh, he's won, what is what is it, uh, th- four de- uh, or three Super Bowls this decade, and he's been to two other ones, which he's lost in. Um, but Tom Brady has just epitomized this decade because it seems like he's there every year in the Super Bowl. And it's the most viewed event, so everybody knows who Tom Brady is. Good job. My turn. All right. So, Paul's going to go in five, four, three, two, one, go. The greatest athlete of this decade is also the greatest athlete ever, greatest basketball player ever. It's LeBron James. He went to every single NBA Finals this year besides the one where Kawhi ended up going, and that's because it was his first year with the Lakers. But... He was on the Cavs this decade. He was on the Heat. He was on the Lakers. Never a dull moment with LeBron James. And he carried some bombs to the finals, too, when he was with the Cavs at some point after Kyrie left. Incredible. LeBron James is the greatest athlete we're ever going to witness. Greatest athlete of the decade. Well said, Paul. He did carry a lot of bombs. J.R. Smith, not knowing what the t- what time is. Um, but that's all the time we have for today. Thank you for tuning in to che- and check out WessexWire.com. And subscribe to the Wessex Wire on YouTube, like, comment, and on Instagram, you can follow the Wessex Wire, drop a like, drop some comments. We look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks for watching, and don't forget that Bam Adebayo is a top five center in the NBA. Cat. Not cat. Cat. See ya. See ya. Paul, what did you get on your math test? Not doing so well.
Mm. He will. All right, Paul. Waiting for that Christmas miracle. Yeah. Paul needs that uh, miracle. He needs the uh, he needs the um, W on his math yeah. test.